Hey there, friends, and welcome to another episode of me reviewing The Bachelorette from someone who has never seen it before. This week we are on week five, and oh boy, did we leave on a cliffhanger for the last episode. Before we jump into it, my guest with me today is Japan. Hello, I am here to discuss The, the Bachelor in. Yeah, this... Okay, <laughs> so last week we left off on... A person from Jen's past, his name, I think it's Matt, wasn't it? Yeah, it's Matt. So I wrote down Alex a bunch of times. Matt. I don't know why. <laughs> I... I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure his name is Matt. Now that you're questioning No, I me, think it I'm... actually is. And I kept writing down Alex. Whatever. He's useless. Anyway. Um, white people name. So pretty, pretty, he pretty spot on. showed up to Auckland flew himself there and confessed wanted to confess his love to jen and it was like what what do you mean so they're kind of hinting at oh he's going to be joining the party and jen kind of walks in talks to the it's the cocktail party and at the cocktail party all the guys are talking they're like hey let's not fight tonight let's keep it chill and then jen comes in is like hey al or matt whatever this guy's name is matt and like everybody's like wait is he joining joining the the whole thing like what and of course they're all upset they're spiraling they're like how can we compete with someone from the past and then we see jen and matt talk and she's like you know why why now after all of this time she's like why would why would we do this now and she's he's like well you know i realize there's no more other chances because you're getting engaged after this and he's like, oh, you mean so much to me. I'm like, buddy, bucko. I don't know, right? Like, why would you wait until... The only thing I could think of is that, like, maybe Jen was kind of, like, didn't seem very interested in, like, pursuing anybody at the time. And then when she did The Bachelorette, he was like, oh, I guess she is ready. But I, I'm not really uh... sure. It, 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 it could have, like, they didn't really explain it necessarily. It almost seemed like they were just kind of friends and that she didn't have a clue that they liked like he liked her even though that they dated before so yeah. i don't know it was a little it was a little strange like it didn't feel completely like like completely out of the blue or whatever but it did feel like kind of weird you know? it was weird it was really yeah. weird um and then it and then it, then it kind of pans to you know grant and devin talking and devin's like kind of frustrated you know he's like she's talked about how the guys she's dated in her past have hurt her and she's cried about it and Devin's like if he's joining then I'm leaving and you know Graham's trying to calm him down but he Devin kind of mentions that although it's not the same he has been cheated on before and this new guy joining almost kind of feels similar to that and Which then not really right or un yeah unfair. I kind of felt like that, too, because the whole point of this is for her to date all these different people and try to figure out who her person is. Now, I can understand feeling blindsided or upset because it is kind of one of those things where it's like, wait, we're all established. Why is this new guy coming in? Um, but what ends up happening is Matt, this is where I got his name right in my notes for some reason. He walks in. <laughs> And he says, Jen, let me know that I am a person that will be staying in her past and I will not be joining you guys. And he leaves. So I thought that was kind of crazy. Did you think that he would be joining? Like me personally, I thought he would. Yeah, I thought for the content, too, it would have been just kind of like a given, you know, to a certain extent that he would. Yeah. Join. Like, I didn't think it would even be an option and then he would have to be like eliminated. Mm hmm. But. I don't know. I, I kind of wanted to see what would happen. I think it would have made her a little bit, like, stronger with her feelings to other people. because it Yeah, like... it would have been like, no, these feelings are real. Like, even with this guy from my past. Yeah, it was it was interesting. I didn't I didn't know what to expect there. Um, yeah, I didn't either, honestly. I, I kind of felt like it was such a blindside, but I loved it. And then it was just kind of like, oh, okay, well, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't last super long. It, it was just yeah. basically the tail end of the last episode. Last episode. Was, like, the first 15 minutes of this episode yeah like not much yeah not much of this one and then it's rose ceremony time and you know we're kind of getting into the last guys there are a few that we've talked about that we feel are the stragglers you know that aren't aren't who we feel 
are connecting with Jen. But the ones that get to stay are Grant, Jeremy, Jonathan, Spencer, Dylan, and Austin. And Thomas Wynn went home. I was actually a little bit surprised by that. And so did John. Um, were you, did you th- find it uh, surprising that Thomas went home? Well, okay. Before. Not really? Because we saw like- in the last episode, he was trying to talk more deeply with her. And we both kind of clocked that she looked super uninterested. So. Yeah. She didn't really seem to care too much. I think it's almost mm-hmm. like they had too much of a similar story that like. It just, I don't know, she didn't vibe. And, like, I honestly feel like a lot of the time it's just he was in there, like, just talking about himself. It didn't seem like he really talked yeah. much about her. And I think, like, yeah. she just didn't really vibe with that either. And I think, like, he just never really recovered from that one time with Dylan. Not Dylan, Devin. Devin. Yeah. I mean, because that's the thing about Thomas in this season, in my opinion, is he's always sort of been at the forefront of drama um one of the forefront people and he always kind of involves himself whether or not he's should be involving himself so um i i don't i'm glad that he i i'm not like sad that he's gone like there's certain guys that i feel like i would be sad if they got they're gone but um whatever you know um after the rose ceremony we get to the next day um or whenever and the boys get a date card and it's going to be Jonathan. Jonathan's going to be getting a one-on-one date with Jen. And honestly, we're going to go into the nitty-gritty details of it. But honestly, they are so freaking cute together. Uh, we yeah, both kind of really agreed. So um, it starts out with, on the date card, it had said something like, oh, let's take our love to new heights. And so he's very scared of heights as well and he gets really anxious because he shows up to a helicopter and he's like oh okay um I'm t- i hate helicopters um the flight is gorgeous new zealand is beautiful oh my god um uh, i've always wanted to move there and, and or i've wanted to move there for a long time now and I, even more so now um it's so insanely beautiful and they end up flying to an island um I meant to write down the phonetic s- way to pronounce this. So I think it's, I believe it was Waheke. Uh, Waheke. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm probably butchering that. I meant to write down the phonetic. I mean, I forgot. So please forgive me if I mispronounce that. Um, but they fly to this island. And honestly, they're so cute. They're playing like kids. They like play hide and seek. And it's just freaking adorable like they they just kind of have this fun afternoon of being silly together and personally i feel like that's really important if you're going to have a good relationship with someone is to be able to have layers to your relationship and the ability to do different things the ability to be friends or be childish and they were so cute right yeah no they really were i just i I don't know they they just have that good vibe and they're like he's definitely my favorite so far for for them yeah i i really wasn't i'm gonna be honest when jonathan showed up with his ass cheeks out i was like i don't like this guy but um despite his unconventional arrival i've he's really grown on me and i just think they're cute and then they show them hanging out in a hot tub and it's super intimate and jonathan you know he's kind of mentioning that he's wanting to connect on a deeper level because it's kind of what he mentioned in his talking heads is that he wants to have those deeper connections so that he knows if this is real and if that's a place that they can go and then they go on this little nighttime date and jonathan kind of opens up a little bit more and he talks about how he has fallen in love before to the point that, like, he was living with this girl and they were looking at rings. And then, um, you know, it was actually really sad to hear, like, his girlfriend ended up going through some stuff and she ended up self-medicating with, like, alcohol and medicine. Suddenly she had a little bit of an addiction problem and it kind of caused her to not be herself. And she got controlling and manipulative and kind of sent him on his way. And he talks about how this just absolutely destroyed him from for himself like his self-worth his ability to trust himself and um you know this vulnerability 
you know, gives Jin that ability to be vulnerable. And she talks about how she had a similar um, experience with being gaslit and manipulated and emotionally abused. And yeah, I don't know. It was um, it was interesting. It was interesting to see them. And I, I actually really liked how how cute they were together. Like seeing this time of them together just made me feel like I'm kind of team Jonathan a little bit. Yeah, me too. I feel like he's definitely the person that so far that I feel like is the number one. Yeah, I like Marcus a lot too, but I, you know, this Jonathan is just, I don't know, they're cute. And it sounds like they have similar ex traumatic experiences and it's something that they both can potentially relate to and hopefully move through together. Okay, one thing we did think was weird, I think they were trying to go for like the whole rom-com vibe for the day, but then they have this like fake rain uh soak them and they kiss in it which is cute but it was a little odd after that the guys get a date card and it's for a group date and the people going on it are going to be Devin, sam marcus spencer jeremy dylan and austin this is where we kind of just start to see some trepidation with austin he's like you know everybody else has gotten to have one-on-ones i really wanted to have the one-on-one -on -one, and i haven't gotten a date rose or a one-on-one -on -one with Jen, and I just, I feel like I need that to be able to connect to her. Um, but unfortunately, he doesn't get that, and Grant is the one that will be getting the one-on-one -on -one date with Jen. So the group date, they end up going to a farm, and basically they're like, hey, you have to prove that you're going to be the best farmer today, and the best farmer will get a little bit of alone time with Jen. So... They start out with sheep herding, and it ends up being a disaster because they can't seem to get the sheep to listen to them. But they also didn't start by opening the gate that they needed to go into. And one of the farmers is like, there's not a lot of collective intelligence here. I was like, damn, y'all are. <laughs> and it was funny, too, because Sam was like, oh, I've always been around animals and stuff. And then, honestly, he you mentioned that he looked the most lost. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is like one thing. He did mention every animal that was not a sheep. So that was also kind of not a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was just funny. But they end up sheep herding and then they end up poop scooping. And during this time, Devin is taking like multiple moments throughout the day to get like special moments with Jen. And, um, you know, this obviously peeves off. The other guys are like, hey, man, we're like putting in all this work. And Austin is like really trying to work hard so that he can get the win so he can get that alone time with Jen like he's putting all this work in and he's like I'm trying to do the best and be the best worker and ultimately he doesn't even win it Devin does which I kind of felt like it was a little bit of BS too because it sounded like he was more focused on Jen than doing the work yeah and, and they sh the, it was the farmer's fault because they phrased it as like oh whoever does the best job get will do it and then yeah. they, then all they said, oh, well, he took the time to go talk to her. And it's like, yeah, well, because they didn't know. <laughs> like, I would yeah. have been, knowing that it was just like, oh, hey, we're just going to pick somebody randomly, like, that we feel like deserves it. Then I would have just spent the time with Jen. So I would at least got yeah. the time. And then if I, you know, which ended up helping Devin win, which kind of sucked. I mean, it was kind of just felt like it was loaded. It felt a little weird. Yeah, it felt, it felt unfair to uh the rest of the guys in my opinion i just felt like it was a little weird and kind of threw threw me for a loop there um it just i don't know wasn't a good vibe wasn't a good vibe i didn't feel like it was fair and i did feel really bad for austin and you know Devin gets his alone time and then they get back to the hotel and Austin is kind of talking in his talking heads about feeling really underappreciated and like he hasn't been able to connect to Jen the way that the other guys have. And he gets his one on one with Jen and he's like, hey, um, I don't feel like we're connecting. I'm not the guy for you. And he decides it's time to go home, which was like huge that was crazy. Like, I didn't expect him to be going home, personally. I thought he was going to go away at the rose ceremony, but, I mean, I yeah. guess it's, it's it's right. I feel like he did the right thing because he just, he wasn't getting the time. He wasn't going to get the time, so instead of being eliminated, he, eliminated, he just figured there's no point. Yeah. I think he just wasn't feeling it. I think he just, he saw everybody else's relationship and said, like, hey, mine's nowhere near that. 
and so I might as well just... It just feels unfair. It, it did, because... I mean, you even got to think about it because, like, he he didn't have a one-on-one -on -one day, and then was it Jerry still doesn't have one? It felt like she hasn't spread it, and like I feel like it kind of puts you at a huge disadvantage because, like, yeah, because you don't get those special moments. Thing. Yeah, it's... and I think that really sucks in those type of cases because it's just not fair to anybody involved because it's just like they're in it too. Like, you know, the bachelor. It's all about the bachelor figuring it out but like they're also spending their time and all this energy being there and it's like well you didn't actually even get to see who i am because you never talked to me other than like the because i feel like those cocktail dates like i guarantee you it's those not aren't half an hour yeah those aren't like those don't seem to be because there's nine dudes there that would be like if you had 30 minutes each, that still would be like almost you know a couple hours that, no i guarantee so you it's like 10 to 15 minutes each yeah, because it feels that way, and it feels like, you know, you can also tell, like, with the way that they film it and stuff, like, they've been filming definitely people less when you know that they're going to go home, so. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I, that's the thing. We can kind of tell. Um, but after Austin leaves, Jen goes down to announce what happened, and she is not doing okay. She's completely shaken from it, and she's kind of talks about how this brings up some old feelings of feeling like she's not good enough or like she's worthless and it's really sad actually <laughs> like it's yeah. triggering some trauma stuff for sure and honestly i just felt so bad for her in this episode i hated it so much for her you know obviously austin was valid in his feelings and i don't think he did anything wrong but i also felt really bad for jen and you know some of this probably isn't her fault as far as you know the way that the times are being handled. I guarantee you a lot of it has to do with production. Um, I don't really know, but I did feel really, really bad for her. She shouldn't have to feel like that. You know, this whole thing is supposed to be about making her or helping her find someone that she can love. And thankfully, the guys kind of step up and they comfort her and try to be there for her. And, you know, by the next day, she feels a lot better. And the next day, we actually see the solo date uh, with Grant, and honestly, we haven't, I know Japan and I haven't really been as big of fans as, of Grant, um, he's at times seemed disingenuine, I guess, right? Like, you feel like yeah, that too. Definitely. Oh yeah, definitely, especially like in the beginning, because he just, he seemed like he was just kind of, you know, there, like he wanted to be on TV type of thing, but he definitely seemed to you know, like what you're about to get into better. Yeah, they go on this date where they ride horses along the beach and then they go and sit on the beach and it starts raining, like they get caught in the rain. It's really cute. And um, it looks like they're actually really having a good time. And then they kind of have the later on nighttime date where they are able to talk more. And Grant kind of goes into, he gets very vulnerable. You know, he talks about how, he grew up with a dad that suffers from addiction and how that affected him and how his dad's now in rehab, which is amazing, um, but how that really affected him as a person and uh, how upsetting it was for him. And this gives Jen the space to open up about her emotionally abusive ex, who also was racist and problematic as hell, and she was trapped in that relationship and being abused and... Which is really sad. I don't know. She just seems so sweet. And I just feel so bad for her that she went through these things. And, um, you know, they end up feeling like they're getting a lot closer. And honestly, I really liked seeing this more genuine, vulnerable side of Grant, personally. Yeah, me too. I mean, I really did. It, it definitely showed off a lot of what he's been, you know, like trying to do. And uh, he actually seemed pretty just himself and that he's in it for it plus what you what happens at the dinner party thing i think definitely cements that yeah we get to the rose ceremony night and all the guys are downstairs talking and grant is like ham hey, and like basically he makes an announcement to the other guys and he's like i think i'm falling in love with jen and it's wild uh you know it, it goes over better obviously than the sam in time did because that was wild um because yeah. this is more genuine and you know he talks about how it's only been five weeks but he feels like he's actually really connecting with her and falling in love with her and 
I don't know. It feels like the guys are less, there's less tension there. It feels like they're more friendly or more closer to being friends. And I actually really like the vibes in, in the group of men that they have. They seem to be more supportive of each other and kinder to each other. And I like seeing that. Um, you know, even if obviously only one guy is going to get Jen. So hopefully they at least get lasting friendships with the other guys <laughs> that they're spending all this time with. And um, you know, we're at the rose ceremony, we think, but Jen comes down and she's like, you know, I'm grateful for everyone's vulnerability, but there's not going to be a cocktail party tonight. There's just going to be a rose ceremony, which obviously the guys are like freaking out about. They're spiraling. They're like, wait a minute. What? She's not going to take the time with us, which Dylan is freaking out. He's like, yeah. I needed this time to connect with her more. I haven't had the ability to connect more with her. And it really sucks. He's feeling left out. And we also get a kind of cute moment between Grant and Jonathan where Grant kind of tears up about his feelings for Jen and how it's scary. And honestly, it's just kind of... Grant's growing on me a little bit more. No, absolutely. I, I feel like he's definitely, like, the second. I still really like Jonathan the most, but... Oh, same. Um, I like Jonathan, Grant, and Marcus the most now. Yeah, that's probably my top three also. Everybody uh, else just kind of, like, some of the other... Well, I guess we'll go into more towards the end after we... Yeah, that's fine. Ceremony. Um, You know, Dylan's panicking, and they get down to the rose ceremony, and there's only five roses, so that means one guy is going home. And, you know... We're panicking, we're nervous, and the people that get roses are Sam, Devin, Marcus, Jeremy, and Spencer, which unfortunately means that Dylan is going home. And honestly, I really like Dylan. I think he was sweet, but he just never seemed to get that time to connect with her as much, and he's heartbroken, and I just felt really bad for him. But, um, you know, we kind of saw the writing on the wall, uh, at least... We were, when we were watching, we were like, yeah, it feels like it's going to be Dylan going home. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I just felt like he, well, one, he only ever had one one-on-one -on -one date, and it was, like, in the very beginning. Yeah, just, it, it was a safari. Yeah. And he just really never got any time with her, like he said. He really yeah. did at that last uh, cocktail party. Yeah. I mean, she felt pretty made, like, her mind was made up, so it made sense. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh... It was wild, for sure. What are you thinking about everybody? I'm thinking everybody there is pretty solid. I think the bottom two would probably be Jeremy and Spencer. Because yep. like, they're obviously kind of falling back with not having as much time. And yeah. I Jeremy, like I said, Jeremy's never had a one-on-one -on -one at all. So like, that, right. kind of, um, that kind of really puts you far behind. So I think like those two... like I think Jen likes both of them, but like they're definitely but not... But they're like, not connected. Connection. Yeah, they're yeah, not as connected. They're probably the next two that go, unless something crazy happens. Yeah, unless something next... changes. I mean, shit. Oops, I didn't mean to cuss. Sorry. <laughs> well, dang. Um, Uzi. Um, I mean, we've seen all the crazy things that have been happening in every episode, so I wouldn't be surprised if some there's another random thing thrown at us. So, I mean, I guess we'll see. Um... But I think the guys that are there are pretty nice. Like I said, you know, we were saying who our favorites are. We want to hear your guys' favorites, too. We want to know what you guys think or your opinions or if you guys think we're wrong about certain opinions, too. But I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see next week. I'm I'm sucked in. I'm wrapped up. <laughs> I know. Me, too. I'm so excited. And then, like, I don't know what we're going to do after that. <laughs> I know. I know, and then we're gonna have to do that because this is this is too good. It's just too dang good. Um, but yeah, that kind of wraps up the episode. Make sure you guys let us know what your thoughts are. I want to hear what you guys think or what you guys agree with, what you disagree with, who your top bachelor is, and thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys check out Japan, and I will see you guys for at least the Bachelorette next Friday. Bye. Bye.